Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm doing an update on the induced draft wood burner that I built. And I wanted to share some things that I've learned. The process is so effective at burning huge logs in wet wood. This is all wet wood, by the way, green wood. And uh, I just cut this thing down yesterday off a living shrub that had to go. Some iron wood, I think it's called. And uh, one of the good things about it the seduced draft is that you can burn huge logs and all of that. But the important thing you need to know is that I think the best pumps are vacuum pumps. You don't want to get a blower like I did. The DIY blower, that impeller design, that entire thing was based on a blower concept. It's not a vacuum pump. Blowers and vacuums are completely different designs. A vacuum is very high speed, has very um, intricate blade designs and can pull a vacuum. Blowers can move a lot of air, but they don't have a lot of pressure. You need a vacuum blower on this thing. The lack of vacuum power was unable to utilize this one side orifice here. It's very important that you have an elbow connection to give you that cyclone effect on this. If you don't, you'll get this reverberating effect. I want to show you, maybe we can simulate that right now what the reverberation effect is like if you just put a straight hole in this thing. It might start doing it here any second. So, as you can see, it's already starting. You hear it? Look at those particles. Oh, that's so hot being right here. Anyway, as it puffs with that reverberation, it'll shoot smoke rings out of it on a fresh batch of wood. This thing will glow red hot. If I turn it up, I believe with what you saw right there, this is just a vacuum cleaner blower and we're running at 96 watts. Highly recommend the setup, but as we've just seen, you want to have that elbow on there. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. No, not really. Jeez, that's a little fire going in there. Kind of see where the fire's the air's coming in by that blast right there. We'll do like 75 watts and we'll go outside and we'll take a look at the blower setup. Now the blower setup you are about to see was set up in a huge emergency basis. Um, my other pipe clogged up with ash and moisture because I turned the blower up too high. So I had a pot of smoking burning wood here with no blower. So I had to hurry up and throw an emergency blower back on which was laying underneath my table here after having been cleaned up last year. So it was an emergency blower that I had on standby. Okay, so here's the emergency setup. That's one of the water we were talking about. We're at a pretty good temperature there. heated my garage every winter. In summertime it was used in experiments and in wintertime it heats my garage and I'm pretty sure this came out of one of them little tiny Bissell vacuum cleaners. The little old handheld ones that have a very powerful vacuum but they're small. Very old vacuum cleaner. The brushes on this thing don't seem as if they've worn down at all. 
when I'm heating the garage, I'm only running it at about 60 to 100 watts anyway, which is very easy. But uh, I'm just amazed at how long this uh, Bissell blower is lasting. I'm almost positive it's a Bissell. I'll try and find a picture of the old one online and uh, show you what vacuum this came out of. But uh, definitely an amazing little pump. It was free and I have got a lot of use out of it. And this thing is still chugging along. I try my best to oil the bearings every time I clean it up. And as long as you keep those Okay, once them start getting a little dirty, if smoke or something's getting on it, then it starts acting up on you. But other than that, this thing's amazing. It can handle very hot discharge gases. I would say um, up into the 400 degree mark. This is probably the hottest I've ever had this, but uh, definitely handles it okay. But that is, um, that's my two cents on the whole thing. Okay, so this here is a blower. This is not a vacuum pump, though I turned it into one, and it turns out they just don't work very well as vacuum pumps. Blowers are good at, at blowing, but uh, they blow, but they don't suck. <laughs> However you want to look at it. This, this was a, a concept I had to try because I had that thing and taken apart in 100 pieces. I was cleaning it. I decided to give this thing a shot. It worked, but nowhere near as good as that thing. It, it's already to a point where it, it just can't pull at full power with that can at 40 watts. This is not a vacuum pump. It needs a far bigger opening to uh, be used effectively. Just the blade shape and everything. It's not a vacuum pump. So if you decide to build one of these, just remember that. You definitely want to go with a vacuum, not a blower. I have never had a cooling fan on this thing either. In the winter time, it's so cold, it runs at about 70 degrees, just enough to keep the bearings warm. And that's at 100 to 125 watts. I never ever have to run this thing over 150 watts. Doing so causes just too much heat inside. You can literally feel the radiation burning your face off on the burner. So I never run it over that. It's typically 100 watts. One thing I do need to warn you about with these driver speed controllers is that when you have it set at a very low setting, say for example in the position we see here, and you're hooked up to a circuit that suddenly experiences, say a 15 amp surge in power. It doesn't have to run 15 amps, but anytime an electric motor starts, it draws twice its rated amount of current, typically. So, that will shut off the triac, and I don't know what it does to it, but it knocks it out of phase or something and causes the motor that's connected to it to turn off. So that is one thing you have to worry about. You have to be mindful of that if you're running a blower for a wood heat system that has other machinery that may turn on. I think you've got to be like at a minimum of 60 to 70 watts for it to maintain. Every triac is going to be different. Um, there's a little dial in the back of these that you can turn to adjust them and whoever put the device together in China Basically sets that to some setting and I doubt they're all the same I know they're not because I bought so many of these that I can tell you I often have to take them apart and dial it in myself So it'll run on those settings if you ever get a router speed controller that Just doesn't seem to turn down very low even though you have it turned all the way in the lowest setting It's because of the little dial on the back of this it's uh, just a little screw hole. It's, there's nothing to it. You'll be able to see it. You, you see that little hole right there? If you turn that screw, that will adjust the, uh, the frequency of the trigger switch to let you run it on lower settings. So in conclusion to all that, and basically what it comes down to is you want to use a vacuum pump to run one of these wood burners and not a blower converted into a vacuum. They just don't pull air well. And uh, you'll start getting like a back, back draft effect and a lot of pulse jet engine behavior. So keep that in mind. I've had mine for six years. I do have to clean it out every year, but it's better than chopping firewood 50 to 60 times a year. That's the trade-off. I got to clean the blower versus chop and dry my firewood. I would rather clean the blower. Just use motor oil, 
and it will uh, cut right through that creosote and tar. Used motor oil, I think, uh, is what I find to work best. I don't know if there's something in the used motor oil that makes it better, maybe a little gas or something, who knows.